Welcome to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast, coming to you from the Cargo District Recording Studios in Wilmington, North Carolina, where we discuss the most fascinating topics of life. I'm Tyler Yaw with my co-host, Chris Kelly, and each week we interview a special guest to learn how they acquired their wisdom over a glass of whiskey. So sit back, pour yourself a glass, and enjoy Whiskey and Wisdom. Welcome back, everybody, to the Whiskey and Wisdom Podcast. This week, we bring on Anne first. She's never second to the podcast. She's the owner of Essential CrossFit and... Nothing. Oh, and because we are doing 75 hard still, this week we're doing water and wisdom. Just because, you know, I have not reached my gallon of water intake for the day. I haven't either. So we're just going to be drinking some water, which is what everyone should do. They suggest a gallon of water for you big people. (laughs) I think technically it's like so many ounces per whatever you weigh, but a gallon's a good number, right? That's great. Yeah. I think that I'm doing a similar challenge that's not 75 hard, but we're going to be running run through the gym as well next month. We're going to start for our members. But so I'm doing like a test run of it now. Oh, yeah. It's a month long. And so each day we're also supposed to drink a gallon of water. Hopefully it'll get rid of my headaches and give me better skin. Yeah. Anne has her big thing of water here too. So we're all drinking as much as we can. Cool. Well, <laughs> we're going to cheers on some water bottles. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Plastic doesn't clean as well. I know. I'm like, I can't get that clip in. It sounds so good in the beginning of our episodes. But yes, Anne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Gosh, it's... It's kind of funny now because we used to live right by the gym in okay. Scott's house. So my husband and I and our four kids, ages 10, 9, 8, and 6, we lived very close and sold our giant, you know, house on Bush's stamp yard. Mm-hmm. We had amazing neighbors, just really cool little neighborhood around there, but just kind of felt like we needed a little more space to spread out. And now we live on a 30-acre fa- farm in Rocky Point. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's cool. Like we have a little teeny house and all this land and the kids are always outside playing and we have six pigs and 10 chickens. And eventually we'll have some goats and hopefully cows too, but we're slowly getting that going. So that's like kind of the, I don't know, kind of crazy thing that we did last year. I can't yeah. have my wife listen to this episode now <laughs> because she's in, she's yeah she's been wanting to start a homestead and everything and she wants a cow named Bessie nice and move to Rocky Point <laughs> like the only there. place where there's land left yeah. around here. Well, no, Ooh. everyone like moves to Hampstead or Leland, mm-hmm. and I'm like y'all aren't thinking far enough in advance. Mm-hmm. If you move to Rocky yeah. Point now and buy, you know, ten to twenty acres for the price of your house and. Wilmington. Yep. Well, then you're ahead of the curve and you can build your space out and then you can eventually sell it to somebody if you want to. Yeah. How are the kids enjoying the smaller house in Moorland? It's funny. They, they've they adjusted to so many different things and changes over the past few years with everything you know, that's been going right. on in the world. And I see they seem fine. They seem yeah. happy. <laughs> they enjoy like take care of the animals and run around outside. And, yeah, it's fun. You know, we even kind of got there in the middle of winter. We finally moved in and didn't seem to coop like we we actually live in a single wide, like six people. So <laughs> <laughs> it would seem like it's super crowded, but it doesn't ever feel like that. Yeah, so that's good. Maybe as the kids get a little older, they'll right. start to like that. But, you know, someday we'll build. We're just not quite there yet. Yeah, I was going to say six people. We I lived in a double wide with six people, and that felt crowded. Hmm. Like, Were know. you all older? Yes. I think don't so. think back too far. Well, no, this was like... <laughs> When I first went to high school, so like 14 through 17. Yeah. And so, I mean, we lived there longer than that. Actually, it's probably middle school too. But all of my siblings, it was me. My sister's 18 months younger than me. My stepbrother was six months younger than her. And then my youngest sister was like five years than me. So we're all like teenage. Yes. And so I'm like, Ugh. I think that's the age, like, especially like heading even into middle school, right? Where Mm. kids start to feel like they need a little bit more privacy. Yeah. And so we're not feeling like pressured to do anything anytime soon, but we've got a little bit of time. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess I should start saving so we can yeah. <laughs> prep to build. Mm -hmm. So are you and your husband from this area? No, we're originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, okay. So yep. what brought you down here? I think ultimately it was weather. Yeah. We, I uh, that. <laughs> our youngest was, well, not our youngest, our second youngest was born in a blizzard in oh, March, no. the end of March. Right. It's like, nope. <laughs> get some snow. And uh, so it's always, he's, it's a funny story. His, his birth is just interesting. I was actually in the middle of a CrossFit workout when I went into labor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, this is the third kid. So I'm like, right. It was the open in 2014. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thrusters and bar facing burpees. <laughs> and and <laughs> this is my third kid. So from familiar with CrossFit and like yeah. women, CrossFit and the whole Ian thing, but <laughs> oftentimes it's an issue. And so I'm working out and I'm like, gosh, I'm like, and it wasn't like, like my water broke, but it wasn't like a huge right, thing. Yeah. But I'm like calculating, you know, having been through this before a couple of times, how much time I have. Right. And so I call my husband. I'm like, hey, I think my water just broke. Finish this workout. <laughs> Determination. <laughs> yeah. Come home, take a shower, and we're going to stop and get a cheeseburger because they're not going to let me eat at the hospital. Right. <laughs> we'll go to the hospital, have this kit. <laughs> and I almost went down like that, except that I guess when I took a shower, they didn't think that my water broke. By the time I got to the hospital, they're like, well, we don't see anything here. And they right. sent us back home. Oh, no. By the time we got there, the first place it was like, we got there maybe at three and they made us sleep at five. And then it took us like the hospital was only like 15 minutes away from us. It took us an hour and a half to get home. Oh, and by then snow. my contractions, yeah, because all the snow. By then my contractions were like two to three minutes apart. <laughs> and I called my doctor because there was a doc house doctor there. Yeah. You got to go home. Okay. And she was like, oh, yeah, you need to go back. I only get back to the hospital like nine o'clock at night. And he came like three hours later. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> What a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. It was a good story. But you finished the workout. Finished the workout. I think it took me like 33 minutes and like like legitimate CrossFitters probably finished in like seven. Right. You know? <laughs> That's amazing though. I mean, how many people have that story? <laughs> I mean, you were also pregnant doing the open workout. Sheesh. So you have a CrossFit gym. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go... Throw it back a little bit. What got you into CrossFit? Well, I was also <laughs> pregnant. In 2011, I, was, I always told my kids, I'm like, I was pregnant for like five years straight. So it's like pretty much most of the story of my Fair, yeah. recent life. Right? <laughs> yeah. In 2011, and my husband and I were watching the CrossFit games. He's like, watch this CrossFit thing. It looks really cool. I'm going to try it. And I'm says, giant belly on the couch. I'm like, <laughs> give me some Cheetos or something. This is crazy. <laughs> People like. Hitting stuff with sledgehammers and climbing ropes. And I could never, I could never do that. I was, I was always athletic. Yeah. Played sports in college and I ran a lot. Even my first pregnancy, I ran much until my due date. <clears throat> but I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. Like I, upper body strength was never a thing. And uh, he used to work offshore, my husband. Mm. Okay. And so he'd be home for a month and gone for a month. Yep. And then, so we had my daughter in September of, to 2011 mm -hmm. and he got to stay home for six weeks instead of four weeks which was like a treat <laughs> and I was like okay cool and then he went back to work and I'm like okay while he's gone I'm like sneak do the, go do this CrossFit thing while he's gone for this month and <laughs> when he comes back I'm gonna be all like pumped up girl you know <laughs> and it worked you know I went to a gym nearby awesome people outside of Cleveland and this gym called CrossFit Spirit and just wonderful coaches you know, worked with me kind of easing back in after pregnancy and things like that, but very conscientious of form, things like that. And, you know, a month later, I felt like I was like strong. Yeah. You know, not just like not pregnant anymore. Right. You know, I, felt, <laughs> I felt like core strength and things that yeah, as a runner or I've played soccer too in, in college, like you just don't work on that kind of stuff specifically. Mm, correct. And in CrossFit, everything's core to extremity work. So, you know, breathing and bracing properly is so important and it really transfers into so many different things too. So, so I got, you know, into shape, CrossFit shape and, and then I actually tricked my brother into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and he is also, he's seven years older than I am. And this was like, this was our, we opened a gym together in Ohio. Okay. Oh, okay. My husband and I and my brother and sister-in-law and Whenever I would tell the story when we opened our gym, this is the story I told. So I tricked my brother into doing CrossFit. Yeah. 
And I had been doing it for like two weeks and and he's very competitive. He's a wrestler and went to the army and you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's always very athletic. And <clears throat> we were playing soccer together at this little indoor place in Cleveland. And he was kind of a little dad bod going on. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I played a ball to him. It was like from here to you know, a couple feet away. Yeah. He couldn't get to the ball. And I was like, what are you doing? You gotta, you gotta make that run. And he looked at me just like in this, with this look of despair on his face, like, I can't. Like, I'm just tired, mm-hmm. you know? And it broke my heart. My big brother I looked up to him my whole yeah. life. And, and so I just thought, like, there's something, you know, he's got he's to try this, you know? So we're sitting around the table at Thanksgiving, and I'm like, hey, I really want to try this CrossFit thing, but. I don't want to go by myself. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Can you go with me? And I've already been going to this other gym yeah. for like two weeks. And I'm like, I think you'd really like it. You know, it sounds cool. It's like kind of competitive. And he'd like the excited more. I was like, hmm, this is 2011, you know, CrossFit constantly, very functional movement. He's like, that sounds cool. <laughs> he's like very analytical. Yeah. And uh, he's like, sure, I'll, I'll go. I'm like, okay, go. there's this gym called CrossFit Independence because I didn't want them to know me, right? Yeah. <laughs> like they have, you know, this intro class on Monday nights, like they're on ramp. Yeah. We can go, I think it's Mondays and Wednesdays at like seven. We can go and, you know, we'll go do it together. He's like, okay, sounds good. Sunday he calls me and I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and he's like, so about this CrossFit, I'm like, yeah. You know, because I've already been going for two right. weeks. And if you've done CrossFit before, you know, like no matter what fitness level you're at, it's like the Marines of fitness. Yeah. They break you. Yes. Break you down and rebuild you. And it, it's all for the better. But you have to to learn that, like, the things you knew before about fitness probably even aren't, aren't really that mm, true. Right. So she's like, so can we maybe start next Monday? And I'm like, <laughs> sure, I guess. Why? What's up? She's like, I'm going to, this week I'm just going to go and, like, do some jogging and some jobs. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah, man, we can start next Monday. That's cool. And so we went the next Monday. And you know, he barely makes it through the first run. He's like, oh, yeah. well, it's so hard. Yeah, whatever. And then yeah. for the second time, he barely makes it through the second workout. But he does, you know. Yeah. And uh, he's like, it looks like you know what you're doing. <laughs> like, yeah. I well. kind of went to this other place a little bit. And 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 so that was, you know, two weeks, whatever, Thanksgiving. And I mean, by Christmas, he lost like 20 pounds. Oh, wow. I mean, it it probably, you know, I don't want to say it saved his life, but it but yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely yeah, it changed his Huge impact, yeah. And then Christmas, we're sitting around talking. He's like, so, you know, about this CrossFit thing. I'm like, I really like it. He's like, and he's very entrepreneurial. Yeah. And he's like, so, you know, I think we should, I'm like, open our own gym. And he's like, yeah, we should do that. <laughs> And uh, months later, we did. And oh my goodness! You know, first month we had like ten members. Next six months we had fifty members, and then we celebrated a hundred members. And it was just like cool, that's insane. Yeah, know? that's awesome. Yeah, and so he still owns a portion of the gym. We decided to to you know <laughs> get out of Cleveland because it's just we couldn't handle the cold anymore. Yep. <laughs> um, and you know, so he's still involved there. But I think eventually he's, they're going to move down down this way too. So oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So. That means you guys definitely need to open a CrossFit gym closer to my house. But you guys did your CrossFit gym in Cleveland. And then how'd you pick Wilmington? Like, was it, oh, hey, you know, let's open up a gym somewhere. Or you were doing the whole scroll down the map and be like, oh, there's a town that looks pretty. Yeah, and we we didn't really have the plan of, of opening another gym here for sure. It was mostly just to, we wanted to be someplace by the water. And at the time when my husband was traveling for work, he could be anywhere. Okay. It didn't really matter. And I have worked remotely for a different company since like 2009. So there was like mm. COVID working from home. Like this is like what right. I do. Normal. So we knew we could go anywhere. We looked, we looked here, we looked in Florida, we looked at Texas a little bit. Mm. And we just said, well, let's go to Wilmington. Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. And then, you know, we, we went to a lot of different gyms in town and, awesome people, you know, in great communities and just wasn't quite like our gym is really family friendly. We offer childcare when we can. We don't have a like regular person, but we, we offer it when we can. And then we have a lot of family type events. 
Okay. It's so like the 4th of July thing. We had like this giant bounce house and like oh, that's kids kind of stuff. Same thing for, for Murph. We had a bounce house and like we did have childcare for those two events. And uh, just try to foster an environment of family-based fitness. So mm-hmm. we run a kids obstacle course program that'll start back up in August 28th. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's neat. And those are Sunday afternoons. How old do they have to be? They, the youngest we've ever had was like four. Okay. And then we, we just asked that parents kind of like help them around right. the course when we're doing that kind of stuff. And then we have up to like tweens and we just kind of separate those classes. We've found too, like as a big family, it's mm-hmm. difficult when you want to do something as a family, but then like this class times for this kid at this right. time. And this, so we let people with, with different age kids come to yeah. class together and we'll just separate them, not even necessarily by age, but more by ability. Right. And uh, so we have three coaches usually at every class and just kind of partition the yeah. kids off into different groups so that they can be with kids that are likewise, you know, skill weather, uh, right. level, something like that. So we have three classes, 1230, 130, and 230. 230 is full with 20 kids in it. Oh, Ooh. wow. And so we're still, we still have a couple spaces left in the other two. So it's, and it's so fun. So we usually have like a culminating event at the end of every season. So it's eight weeks. And then at the end of the eight week season, we'll go to our race. So in the spring season, we went to the Fayetteville Spartan race mm. and we had like 50 people. Oh, wow. And all wearing like essential CrossFit yeah. shirts. It's really cool. And then this time we're going to go do, there's a race in Myrtle Beach. I just oh, found okay. it actually, because there's a Spartan race too in Virginia. So the weekend before Halloween. Mm. And I was like, gosh, it's four hours. Like, <laughs> yeah. We'll like have to plan and make people want to camp or something. But this yeah. one's just down in Myrtle Beach. And I, I forget the name of it. I'd give them some props too. But there's a Myrtle Beach Spartan race the weekend before Halloween. And I was going to go down there and do that one because it's like people can make it a day trip a little yeah. bit easier. Yeah. And then hopefully someday, <laughs> well, like we have 30 acres, you know, Rocky Point, maybe we could build something out there. Oh, that'd um, be a little race out yeah. that way. I was going to ask that because. There's always Spartan races and these random, not really random, but they're like never here. Right. And I was like, why doesn't Wilmington have a Spartan race? But I'm assuming it's because there's no one who has the space and or has built the course. Yeah. And it's, I guess it's interesting here too, because there's the elevation is Mm, not so so great. Flat, (laughs) right. Yeah, right. So there might be some places like down in Lind or something where there's more you know, difference in elevations there. But here it would be like you'd have to go make hills. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that might be a challenge. But one of the things that we have done at the gym too is that Spartan has their own version of like functional fitness and they call mm-hmm. it DECA. And so we had our first DECA event yeah. in June. That was really fun. And so it's like DECA short for decathlon, like yeah. 10 different okay. stations. And um, so we had like 80 people at that thing. It was so cool. I mean, we had this girl, Tara Jackson, she trains in town and she was trying to break the world record. I think she was like 12 seconds off of it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But it was really hot too. So I'm yeah. sorry. But it, was, it was cool. You know, see pe- people like that finishing these 10 stations and the one that we did, there's a couple of different versions of it. Some of it has running in it. This one we did is just the 10 stations and she did like 12 minutes and 40 some seconds. Jeez. And I did it like 23 minutes, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. wow, you know, just people are so fit. She ran in college and stuff. She's, wow. she's got, so if you ever look for a personal trainer, I think she trains people too. I think she yeah. does, but she's, she's a cool chick. And it was, it was just amazing to see people performing at that, like you know, right. in the zone, just like amazing. Out of zone. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you guys were doing that too. I wanted to come out, but then I was somewhere else. I think I had to travel somewhere, unfortunately, that weekend because that that's more my level. Because when it comes to running for the actual like Spartan race, yeah, that that's where it like trips me up. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm running, right? <laughs> but the Deca thing is a lot more my speed. So we're gonna try to do another one, hopefully before the end of this year. So cool. yeah, we're actually like a Deca affiliate, and now there are a couple of DECA affiliates in town, which is cool. Oh, wow. So you'll start to see more events like that popping up. November 12th. That's when you want it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll see if it's open. <laughs> Are you going to come? I'll show yeah. up. I'll support. Okay. For sure. You guys can set up your yeah, he'll yeah. two-top. I will most likely not be 
participating? Right. <laughs> Commentary. But after 75 hard, you'll be so fit, you'll be ready to go. <laughs> no, so we were talking about this earlier is like it's so hard for some people is like I personally just don't like working out. I know you need to do it to like get there mm-hmm. and then you once you get over the hump, mm-hmm. you'll be better off for it. But like my wife has like this beach body like muscle burns fat or something like that. And then she was like, "Oh, here. This should be easy. Go ahead and do it." And I was like, mm, "Nope." <laughs> I, w- I was doing it, processing it, and I'm like, I am so old, my hip does not like this. And because when I was younger, I had done some workouts and stuff, so I knew, like, some forms of, like, how you should properly hold yourself up and move in different angles. And I'm just doing this stuff. I'm like, no, my, I need to go in front of another person because my... I know my hip is going the wrong way or I'm going to break something in me. So eventually I'll, I'll get back into it. I'll find a coach. <laughs> I'll say that's why I need a coach or other people to be around you and everything yeah, like and that. I think that a lot of people are like that too, right? Like they do not like working out. A lot of people don't like to eat vegetables, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want to <laughs> be successful at things like, you know, what are you learning through 75 hard? You can do hard things and all you have to do is make it a habit. Right. Yep. Right. So. We actually use program and put it all out there. Everyone's doing anything on our gym. Like <laughs> we, the programming that we use for our gym is called street parking. Mm. And I specifically chose it as I was looking at different programs to like, I knew I didn't want to write the programming because one, I don't have the time commitment. And although I have an L3 CrossFit certification, oh, like wow. been doing this for 11 years now, I don't consider myself an expert programmer. Mm-hmm. There's just too many different things to think about. There's too many movements I wouldn't even consider. Right. right. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And so there are lots of different programs out there like Mayhem and Victus. And you see people doing things like CompTrain and, and they're awesome. But that's not who I'm trying to reach. Right. right. I'm trying to reach people who otherwise might be intimidated by CrossFit. Yep. So street parking is, I guess, a group of like 30,000 athletes worldwide. And it's written by Holy and and Miranda Alcaraz. They were games athletes years Mm -hmm. ago, and now they have three kids, and they they just understand a a wide, diverse group of people. Every workout that they post every day has a dumbbell version, a barbell version, a sandbag version, and then usually some kind of unweighted version or like super scaled version. So it doesn't matter what level you come to us from. Like we can make an accommodation and a scale that will suit you need. Right. And I think that like again, CrossFit has like this kind of intimidating reputation. Yeah. And it's it's sad because people watch teams like like I've sat they're going, I could never do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean and I have a different mindset. So I was like, but I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Right. And but not everything everyone thinks that way. So our goal is to make it like the the lowest barrier of entry. So you look at the board and it says pull-ups. You're like, I can't do pull-ups. You don't have to do pull-ups. So we're going to show you how to do a ring row or how to do an inverted Mm -hmm. row or a a barbell bent over row. There's a million different things that we can do to scale to give you a similar stimulus and still have that workout be challenging for you. So we say it's like everyone's here. (laughs) Everyone here is doing the same thing. Well, we're not really doing the same. We're all doing different things (laughs) kind of the same way. So like you'll come and look at, at our gym and you'll see people almost looking like they're doing different workouts. So most of the days now, like I've had this, this wrist thing since the open because mm-hmm. <laughs> wall walks and I've you know, seen Colleen and Sean yep. at Paragon <laughs> next door and they're amazing. But so I've been trying to do things to spare my wrists mm. mobility. So like I almost always select a dumbbell workout if anything is overhead right now right. To, to spare that. And other people in class will be doing a barbell workout. And we really try to make sure that people understand that scaling is is part of growth. It's not... There's nothing bad about it. There's nothing to be like ashamed about. It's it's how you get to where, you know, this guy in the gym who's lifting a million pounds is, you know, like yeah. you have to, you know, figure out where you are in your fitness journey and we help meet you there. Is that why there's able to be so many different CrossFit gyms in an area because everyone's using different programs? Yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons why there are different. 
at many different. Well, first of all, there's a it's an affiliate model. Right? It's not a franchise. Sure. Yeah. So there's no like necessarily like any geographic you know territory protection mm-hmm. in an area. I mean, CrossFit will look at you and say, "Well, if you're right next door to somebody, we wouldn't let you open another CrossFit." Like <laughs> yeah. they're not that crazy. But yeah, I think it, lots of gyms have different focuses too. Like some might have a slightly more competitive angle. Like ours is like our big thing is like family. Right. It's really important to us. And then kind of casting the widest net of mm-hmm. fitness. And so I think everyone kind of puts their own spin on it. And that's what makes it so unique. CrossFit's doing a lot of rebranding, you know, and, and marketing support now that they didn't do before, okay. uh, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So they've, in the last like year and a half, they put out this affiliate playbook, helps business owners, right? Because we're not just, we're not just gym owners. Like yeah. this is a business and you need to make money at it. <laughs> right. And so they're trying to put those tools in place and systems similar to what franchises have. And it's not free, right? So if mm-hmm. you, if you want to, if you wanted to, probably, I, I would imagine that at some point they're going to be like, here's all this stuff that are systems that would be like a franchise and you could put it all into place and it would cost like a franchise would. Right. But if you don't want to do that, do your own thing. And so you pay at the affiliate fee and then you get to kind of pick and choose and, and things like that. So I think they're, they're going toward maybe not necessarily affiliate model, mm-hmm. but putting those things in place so that people feel as business owners more supported. Yeah. So I was trying to put out like a media kit. So you have like graphics and like things like that that you can use on a regular basis and the playbook. Kind of tells you a little bit about like operations for your business and things like that. And they have really come together with some like really good partners and, and network to get us discounts on like uh, Albert's company hybrid yeah. is in the affiliate partner network. So that's pretty, pretty cool that that's they're doing that now. Yeah. yeah. So you told, you told us the story about your brother, but what, what makes working out so special to you? How has it changed your life specifically with CrossFit? It keeps me motivated. Like, going to see my people. Yeah. You know, so I first moved here and we went to a couple of different gyms and things like that. And I, I like to perfect mm-hmm. <laughs> different parts. Okay. Cause in CrossFit, you're like a generalist, right? You like right. do a lot of different things, really average. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to get better at, at lifting. Right. I went and got my USAW L1. And before that I had sought out Walt Newbar with Wilmington Weightlifting Club. And I was like, mm-hmm. Hey, Walt, can I come train with you for a little bit? Like I need I need, there are a few things I need to like brush up on and I could spend years here and not get good at, <laughs> right. at this, but you know, he's got amazing athletes that come out of there and win the American open and all kinds of stuff like wow. that. So I trained with Walt for a little while and, and he said to me like, you know, I'm like, I just came here. Don't know anybody. And like, I even went to a couple of gyms and like, I just haven't found like the people yet. And he's like, well, you know, and past in your, in your life, like, where have you found your friends. I'm like, I don't know, like CrossFit and church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, all right. He's like, well, come to church with us sometime. And you know, you just had Abby McGee on the other day, Salt and Charm, right? Oh, we had a Matt Ray with Abby. Yeah. yeah okay. So we, that was Rock Church that Abby. Okay. Saw. Okay. My brother used to be the, the pastor of, and they've since closed, but we, we went to Rock Church for a while with them and kind of, you know, got connected with a really amazing group of people there. And, and like I said, just didn't, Gym wise, feel like we have some awesome friends. Like the owners of CrossFit Wilmington are two of my best friends. Mm. But just we're trying to create something a little different, and so now we now we have it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, so for me, it's CrossFit because I used to run marathons. Oh. I did them with the team and training of the Bohemia Society. Yeah, and so it was a group of people, right? That we came together, common purpose. We're raising money, a call to action, mm-hmm. and those people were kind of my people for however long. And I was like. I think I'm just like tired of running, but uh, the Leukemia Society is an awesome organization and, and team and training has got, you know, got people into running. Right. Like CrossFit has gotten people into, you know, well, like weightlifting or, you know, anything else like that, different kinds of functional fitness. And so for me, really, it's been, you know, getting, getting to know people and also making it more purposeful. So like we do stuff for a reason, right? right. So like we had our event on 4th of July weekend. It was for Operation Underground Railroad, who mm. does things all over the world to yeah. you know, save people from human trafficking and, and make people aware of the signs of it and things like that. Mm. Last year, we did AMRAP for autism. We did a fundraiser for the Pretty in Pink Foundation. And there's just like at like the Phoenix event, like there's so many ways to make it more about just working out. And I think that's, that's what's magical about it for me. That's really cool. 
Yeah, there's not, or at least I haven't seen too many places that have those programs based around something that's giving back. I think that's really cool. So I try and ask us a random question each each podcast. So mine for you is, what is your favorite and least favorite workout that is not a burpee? <laughs> Did you know that I really like burpees? No. That's, either either that's, people like them or they hate them. Yeah, it's funny that you see them. I, I don't just, burpees. I despise burpees just because, like, when I've done them, I'm – let's be real. I'm kind of tall. So yeah. when I go up really high and then really low, like, the blood from up here does not <laughs> stay in my head. So I get lightheaded and I'm like, no. But – uh, A workout overall or a movement? I mean, I think – well, I have to tell you, my, one of my favorite workouts was that open workout. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there happened to be burpees in it. It was thrusters and bar facing burpees. So, I mean, I don't love thrusters, but that's just such a great memory. I don't know. I mean, I guess I enjoy like snatching. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, like single arm, like dumbbell stuff has become really popular lately. Mm-hmm. I think some of it had to do with like you know, COVID and people were working out from home and everybody got, just got dumbbells. Yeah. But they've had like, dumbbell snatches in the open the last two years now oh wow yeah so i like that oh, i love double unders mm-hmm. that's probably one of my favorite things to do i'm i haven't tried the double under crossover yet but i'm gonna <laughs> i'm not coordinated to pull off a double under really like continuously like i because every time i see people do them i'm like all right you get that good repetition and i'm yeah. like well i did two and now i got to restart <laughs> it's practice man yep practice makes perfect mm-hmm. that's what it's about at least i know what a double under is but <laughs> true <For> the- <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally because despite my amazing body of dionysus what so what is what's a double under for non yeah for a non-crossfitter or had like all kinds of like jump rope champion people come and help us too yeah and then we need to find some people in town because it's really neat to connect to like jump rope teams. Yeah. And they show you things and you're like, <laughs> do that. But for every one time you jump, the rope passes under your feet twice. Mm. It can be difficult to count. So lots of times they tell you to like listen for the sound of the rope when you're like yeah. judging someone in the open or something like that so that you can understand when to count the rep. And it's, it's really a matter. People say like, you don't have to jump higher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you have to um, be up. Mm-hmm. Long it's longer, yeah. right? Yeah. And so by necessity, you can't stay as low to the ground as you can for a single under. Mm. So increase the amplitude of your jump. <laughs> you don't want to say jump higher. Jump longer. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I don't say it was like that hard for me to learn, but it definitely took a while, you know, and you're like doing these things. And you're like, take this rope in the room. <laughs> and people are so mad, you know. Like whip marks all over your legs, but once you get it, it's 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 one of those things mm-hmm. you're like really proud of yourself. To yeah, do. it's like getting your first muscle up or something like that. You're like, oh, that was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so. I was a wrestler growing up, so that was just part of my like warm up routine. It was double, uh, unders. double unders. Nice. Yeah, it's because you got made fun of if you couldn't do that. So you're, about, you're running a shower in a plastic suit, lose weight. My brother's so, did. It was weird when I was going through is when they started changing all of the rules for middle school and high school where you have to start doing hydration tests. And so this is how strict they are. Just long story, really this short. Here? This no, was no, in no. PA. Okay. Yeah. Not here. Because when I was in high school, we were kids Spitting were still cup. running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my <laughs> first like few years, so I started in like elementary school. I was in first grade when I first started wrestling. And like watching it, it was like, that's what you did. My first couple years of middle school, that's what you did. And then my last year, middle school, first year of high school, I can't remember. They started doing this hydration test and it got so strict that my body fat was too low that they wouldn't let me lose 0.08 of a pound to drop down to the next weight class because my hydration wasn't where it should have been. Wow. And my, my body fat was so low. So I had to actually move up eight pounds and i was like this is more dangerous than letting me lose uh, like yeah. not even 10 of a pound yeah yeah but yeah there was a few tournaments where we had to cut a little bit of weight but yeah. I don't, of do thing. they do that in north carolina for what? i don't know the I, hydration, the hydration test, test i think it started getting more popular but i don't know if north carolina does it okay. yet so we have a one of the best wrestlers in the state comes to our gym oh yeah and uh 
he's he's so cool. So he started coming last summer and and I was like, his mom comes to the gym too. And I was like, oh, hey, like, hey, I want to make sure that he doesn't get like too big. So can you like <laughs> yeah. just talk to coach, have him talk to me and like make sure we're on the same level as far as program and yeah. things like that. Cause like I don't want him to gain weight and then coach is all mad at me in the fall because he's got a in the winter he's gonna wrestle right. up a class yeah. and it's like totally unplanned, right? So but it, it didn't happen. And, uh, and then he was second in the state. So I guess. Wow. Nice. Helped. Yeah. That's incredible. Out of Laney? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's a really cool kid too. That's neat. So, yeah. Awesome family. Yeah. I never wrestled. I played basketball and I knew some kids who wrestled. And so I like they down here, the season overlap. So mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I'd be outside like waiting for JV practice to start because I wasn't cool enough for varsity. <laughs> and I'd see the kids like running and I'm like, what are they doing Those with are the, the trash crazy bags? Ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had one kid, I can't remember who his dad was, but like his dad literally made him because they lived far enough away from town, quote unquote, that like his dad would stop like about half a mile from the house and be like, all right, get out. Yeah. Push it, <laughs> and he'd he'd have to like his workout was pushing the car to the house. Oh my! I'm like, man, y'all are it's tough. Yeah. You are going to become a marine. That's what I thought. <laughs> like, there are certain people like, yep, you're probably enlisting at some point. Most wrestlers that I knew, if you were crazy enough to be a wrestler, you're like you were doing it to be a champion. So, and I'm sure your brother was very similar to that. If yeah. you went to the military afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very, he's very, so many interesting, like, good words to describe, like, his drive and his motivation. He's very focused. Yeah. So you did marathons first, right? Mm -hmm. So how was that transition going from marathons to weightlifting? (laughs) I was really uncoordinated at first. (laughs) But I, 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 it's funny because I, in college, I played soccer and Mm -hmm. I ran track and I was a sprinter and a hurdler. Okay. So like, like, I guess I had a little quickness, but that's probably like the, the slowest sprinter I think. So thanks for letting me run, Charlotte. And I would, like, you know, there's a lot of like jumping, kind yeah. of like little jumping, and right. like weightlifting. And it would be like completely exaggerated. Like my jump would be like, you're not <laughs> jumping up, you're jumping under <laughs> like mm. trap door. And so I don't know, I think. Like other sports wise, it was, it didn't make it that bad. I can imagine to be just a distance runner. Right. Like you have people who come in to like come from just distance runners or like in soccer. Like I played outside mid, so I ran a lot, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm mostly running type position. Right. It's an interesting transition, especially I talk a lot about how runners are usually like very strong legs, mm-hmm. upper body is, and then like you could coordinate the arms and legs moving appropriately, but there's not necessarily like a lot of connectivity right so seeing the uh, kind of being able to communicate how to how to attach those two parts of your body Mm -hmm. and make them work together it it takes a while for distance runners and i've noticed for soccer players as well okay that's interesting Uh, older ones (laughs) and then the kids kids today too that's why we're so focused on kids fitness it's just like seeing kids come with such terrible core strength it's Mm -hmm. like heartbreaking right yeah i have a hard time doing a sit-up and and their uh, grip strength is like grip strength is like related to overall health. Right. Yeah. Like if you can't hang for 90 seconds, there's some like correlation with like longevity. Right. So oh, wow. it's it's important. And um, you know, these kids come to us and some of them are in other sports and, you know, like coordinated or whatever. Mm-hmm. But even those ones, like <sighs> we spend so much time focusing on sport and that's the top of the pyramid. Right. Right. We need to focus on the bottom, which first of all is nutrition. Yeah. And then we think about like all the other different pieces that we have to have, like conditioning and strength and all these other different agility and coordination. Mm. And then at the very, very tippity top about sport and let you know, finite type movements that we learn to, to be excellent at yeah. those sports. And we have, as a culture, I think maybe just gotten impatient and mm-hmm. skipped right to the sport. I got to go sport. Right? Even sense. like, Coached USA soccer licensed coach or whatever. Yeah. USA. <laughs> it's been so long since I've coached coach. But they taught years ago, get to the game. Get to the game. So mm-hmm. important that you do. Get to the game. Right. We don't want anybody to be bored. Right. So the idea of 
drills and you know, dribbling between cones and all this like kind of went out the window and all mm-hmm. they wanted you to do was get to the game. And I've done a lot of different things. So I taught <laughs> I taught high school for a, a while. Okay. English and science and interesting combo, but they the science teacher, so I was like, sure. Right. And I I always taught like sentence structure mm-hmm. and paragraph structure before I just like go let kids write essays. <laughs> right. But the same thing, like the administration would be like, should I let them let them free write? And I'm like, why? <laughs> right, right. Because it's important to know those different pieces and understand how words function together. Yeah. Before you write an essay or write, write five paragraph essay, mm-hmm. right? You've got to be able to know these different fundamentals. So, I don't know. That was kind of something we talked about in the last episode as well, too, is just going back to the basics mm-hmm. and being able to have that foundation before you can start kind of leveling yourself up. And it was interesting that you you worded it that way, having like a pyramid with sport being the top. I never thought about it like that, but you're absolutely right where there's just so much disconnect for especially the youth today that they're thinking like, hey, if I'm not going to be this athlete in high school, then why should I even try to go on a run or work out anyway? That's it's extremely sad. Yeah. And I can't take credit for the pyramid. That's a CrossFit. (laughs) <laughs> so thanks to Greg Glassman. Yeah. But the wrestling family, mm. uh, they have a, the dad, Nick Bonacore has a yeah. thing called the Reform Sports Project. I, I had right? a feeling that's yeah. who you're talking Yeah. <laughs> so I'll drop his name. Yep. I'm going to drop his son's name. That might be. <laughs> but you know who I'm talking about now. And the whole idea is like play multiple sports. Mm. And the same thing, that's a, a, another philosophy of CrossFit, like try new sports often. Yeah. And I think in our family, my daughter is like the prime example of that. So she's 10 and she wrestles. Oh, wow. She's done tennis, lacrosse. And I'm like, hey, do you want to try surfing? She's like, yeah, I'll go to yeah. surf camp. So she'd surf camp for a week. And and I, I love the like the passion for trying new things. Right. She gets a little frustrated because she's like really good at stuff. Yeah. And so she does get a little frustrated if she's not good at it right away. <laughs> sure. But she, she, she's usually pretty good at it right yeah. away. And, but just the the desire to try new things and the the, the lack of a fear of failure. And right. failure is like the way we learn, the mm. primary channel of that. So, and that's, again, with our obstacle course, one of the things that we try to teach, like, hey, you might not get up the wall the first time. Right. That's okay. Like, we're here for eight weeks this session. You come back next session. Mm-hmm. One of these days, we're going to tackle that green monster. Yeah. And it's going to make you light up. You're going to be so happy. That's cool. And so those like really magical kind of moments are what like mm-hmm. make it all worth it. I'm, I'm glad we went into that too, because that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring you on is just talking about the the foundation and fundamentals of just being healthy and feeling healthy and feeling comfortable in your own body and how that just translates into so much more of your life beyond just being able to do a pull up. Sure. So kind of elaborate how important that is, not necessarily to you, but to being able to help those people that maybe came in not being the most athletic, most athletic. Yeah, that's, that's great. Those <laughs> like, those are the kind of things too. like, I'll like somebody will get something for the first time and like cry. And, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I have my own stories like that too. Yeah, sure, right? yeah. Like, so my first muscle up, I got in the open. Yeah. My kids were there. And it was at my old gym, old gym in Ohio and my brother was there. He's looking, he's crying. Cause like people knew, like I tried right. so hard for like a year I was trying to get one to go to clinics and do all this extra training and yeah. da, da, da. And like, when I finally got it. Everyone was like, awesome. That's like, too Whoa. cool. <laughs> you know, so those moments, you know, whether it's someone getting their first pulp or you know, going from, I can't, I can't do a push up. I do girl push ups. Like, first of all, you do a scaled push up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and second of all, we're going to get away from those because if you're ever going to do an RX push up, mm-hmm. you need to be able to do a plank. Yeah. So we're going to plank and then we're going to do negatives in your plank to a box, to a wall for crying out mm-hmm. loud. We're going to stand up against the wall. We're going to lean into the wall. Yeah. And so taking people through those progressions because people just don't even understand that there's something not just able to do push-ups or not able to do push-ups. Like <laughs> yeah. there's like a million different ways to get to it. So 
Yeah. So I think that helping people see those successes, whether it's in a movement or in nutrition. So we've started a huge nutrition program at the gym. It's like catching on like wildfire. We're so, we're so proud of it. Like our head nutrition coach name is Carrie Miskill and she's amazing. She does all of our intakes and does all the nutrition coaching and it's very much habit-based, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going through 75 hard, the challenges I'm going through. It's like very much like, what can I, what are the things I can tackle? And I, I know I can accomplish it. You know, you could drink water. It's kind of a pain in the butt to carry this thing around for all day. <laughs> yeah. But you know, at the end of the day that you can look at this and drink water. And it's probably one of the easiest habits to put at the bottom of your stack. Mm-hmm. You want to do double unders, I'm coming every day and you're going to put it at the bottom of my stack. I'm going to do five minutes of practice on double unders. I don't care how many times I whip myself. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, of course, we're going to show you some things about like rhythm, right? right. Penguin drill, like all these different things that mm-hmm. you can learn to get better at the timing and then building on that little bit of success and that five minute, we're not going to do five minutes straight double yeah, unders. Of that course. Yeah. Very painful. You know, go take a little break, do some more, whatever. And <clears throat> it's that, Making sure, making it a habit that, that gets people there. I yeah. want to do a pull up. I always tell people easiest way to get there: three sets of ten negatives mm. every time you come to the gym. I can't do negatives. Okay, get a band. You can do it with band. Okay, we're going to start from the floor and do negative inverted rows. Like wherever you're at, we're going to okay. find a place to like level up from. Yep. And that's the other thing. She was like making it somewhat gamified. Right. right? level up using like these types of words that connect with people emotionally Mm -hmm. and speaking of the emotion figuring out their why why do you want to do why do you want to do a pull-up because i want to look strong for my kids all right now we're getting somewhere Mm. yeah because i want to be here when they're 20 30 you know whatever getting married and they're having kids right i want to be here for that all right now we're getting somewhere yeah. And so it's kind of uncovering those those deep connections to what people why want to do what they want to do. Yeah. For some people it might be somewhat seemingly more superficial, but almost always if we ask some more questions we can figure out their true why and connect mm-hmm. to that and then have that be a part of their goal and that's yeah. important. That's so much deeper than just getting a Atlantic Fitness. <laughs> like membership, you know, like that's probably why people fail so often. Sure. It's not connected to that why. Mm-hmm. And being able to have someone like you and your team over there you probably have a great retention rate. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And I think that it's has something to do with the coaching and uh, the connecting in that way. I call myself a professional nag. <laughs> like people are in class and like, I like we have a system, we have a CRM. And right. if people don't come, it will say, so-and-so hasn't been to class. Do you want to put them in the at-risk member <laughs> yeah. like thing? It'll start firing off out text. I'm like, no. I'm like, hey, so-and-so, I usually use anybody's name, <laughs> haven't been in class this week. Is everything okay? Yeah. You know, and so I'm calling, I'm texting, you know, from like people know oh, me wow. on a very personal level. And, and those people matter to me. Like, yeah. it's somewhat foolish, right? Because people leave. Right. Kind of hurts my heart. And there's going to be reasons for that. But, you know, at the heart of it, I, I want people to feel like they're part of something so much bigger than just right. getting a pull up. You know, <laughs> fitness. It's bigger than fitness. It's always yeah. been bigger than fitness for me. Gotcha. And Steve Jobs says, stay foolish. So, mm. all right, I'm in. <laughs> I love that. I was just mentally, I'm reversing in my head. I saw this tweet the other day and it made me happy because, like, that's what your, your CrossFit is kind of pushing towards is helping kids get back. Because apparently, according to CBS, that kids today are 30% less aerobically fit than their parents. I believe that. And everyone, well, the study says it's climate change <laughs> and rising temperatures. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. In my head, I'm like, or it's because they're not getting out. They're not, I mean, right. even when I was a kid, it was like, go outside, go do something. Nowadays, mm-hmm. it's, why don't you sit in front of the computer and play Fortnite or, you know, Fall Guys or something silly? Mm-hmm. And 
I saw that tweet and then you were talking and it made me think about like, it's so nice that you are, you've built a culture where kids can come and try and get fit. And it's not like, Oh, Hey, you know, I just dropped them off at a daycare and I hope they're playing outside. It's bringing the family together to try and keep people healthy. Yeah. And the family is so, so key, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. because think about any of the goals that you have in life, whether it's, you know, professionally or personally, if you don't have that network there to support you that understands your, your why, Mm -hmm. then, you know, the the likelihood of success is so much smaller. Right. So it's kind of like put families on missions together. And so we're going to tackle as we dive more into the nutrition thing, understanding how we can eat better as families Mm -hmm. because parents fall into the trap. Kid won't do anything but Mac and cheese and hot dogs. Well, who gave that? Not in a go cut <laughs> So, and we, you know, we did it too. We first, you know, had our kids. We did a lot of paleo. Yeah. Or crossfitters, right? <laughs> and and then, you know, slowly kind of fell out of it and got lazy with it, whatever. So, you know, we have snacks in our house. And I look at them I'm like, you're going to have <laughs> And so we're trying to like, you know, get that cleaned up ourselves as well. But it's so much easier when you have a team tackling it together. So when I, we have a a members group uh, on Facebook, like most gyms do, right? And so when I address the group, occasionally I'll be like, hey guys, hey y'all, whatever. But most of the time I say, hey team. Right. Because that's what I think above these people. Like they're my team Mm -hmm. and they're the people that I want going to the Spartan race with me. Mm -hmm. People that I want helping me pick up trash in the neighborhood. Like right. we had a whole workout on a Saturday that was dedicated with, or out there with trash bags, picking up trash on Fudge Creek Road. Oh, wow. We didn't get very far because believe it or not, there's a lot of trash on Fudge Creek Road. I mean, there's a lot of trash. Ten. What's up with that? Well. And ever since Florence, I feel like it's been like next level. Well, I, I was noticing this because Tyler said, you know, his quote where he forced his friend, to, you know, just start picking up trash everywhere. And I, I will, I don't remember the quote, but I remember the sentiment. And so my head is always like, oh, yeah. be the change you want to see in the world. Yes. But I think a lot of people just don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. And Wilmington also has a lot of trucks and people just throw stuff in the back of their truck and then just drive. And then the stuff just gets blown mm-hmm. out. Their truck. Well, I, I think it does kind of go back to fitness with that, too. Like, if you don't care enough about yourself, why do you care enough about the trash that you leave? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the sloppiness in general. What made you want to do the the nutrition part and how did that come about? I felt like we had we had kind of dabbled in like little challenges that we'd have. And I felt like it was not laid out in a step-by-step (laughs) tackle form for people. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, here's this template of you know, meal template. And here's like if we do challenge, here's points for following the template and doing this but like how right so we partnered with a company called hsn nutrition Mm -hmm. and they've done all of our training for us we use an app with them kind of backing us up if we have any questions that are beyond our realm our scope because legally you can only say so much if you're a nutrition coach versus a dietitian yeah then we actually have a dietitian through hsn that we can contact and and Uh, hook them up with and so i felt like we needed a more structured support system and also, like, they're, they're mentors for us. So we have questions about, like, how do we, you know, this person's got these things going on. You know, they want to, you know, this person wants to gain weight versus this person wants to lose weight. Like, you know, little things that, that Carrie, as our nutrition coach, is already well-versed in because she has a degree in right. exercise science and things like that. But it, it really helped us understand the business behind it and really connecting. So actually... <laughs> The owner of HSN, Nicole O'Coin, called me on Monday and they just had got back from the games and she had an awesome talk with like CrossFit Health and stuff like that. So she's checking in on people. She's having a big thing in September. She's like, oh, you're going to come to the conference in Memphis? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I would love to, but I'm not. And, and I was like, I like teared up. I'm like, Nicole, I'm like, partnering with you guys has changed our business. Like it helps us connect with our members and understand and showed them so they can understand in a very relatable way how to habit stack from the very smallest changes they can make on an incremental basis into 
you know, transforming their lives. Right. right. And so it, it seemed like a void and a service that we needed, we needed to fulfill. Yeah. And we were, I was hearing it mostly from my parents at the obstacle course. Hey, mm. you need some help with nutrition. You guys, do you guys do anything with nutrition? And I'm like, we are almost there. Right. Yeah. So until you have like the certificates and things yeah. like that, like legally, again, you're not really allowed to say much about yeah. it. Other than here's a template. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, have to be very careful about that. It definitely seemed like, and again, going back to the pyramid, what's at the bottom, mm-hmm. making sure that people see it as like fuel. Right. Right. And how, what types of, how you get the most mileage out of your vehicle. Mm-hmm. So knowing what to put in is very important. Yeah. Well, we have come up on an hour already. It blew by again. <laughs> but I do have to ask you the last question. Uh-oh. If you were to tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Goodness. This is always the hard one. It Mm -hmm. is a hard one. Don't be so afraid of failing. Yeah, I like that one. Mm. I like it. Is that something you struggled with when you were younger too? Yeah. Yeah. I always always tell people my greatest fear is failure. But I don't don't know why. I've definitely done it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) We all have. (laughs) Is that why you have your kids do the different sports and everything too? So they can kind of get used to it early and often and know that it's okay? I, you know, I think it kind of goes back to the whole obstacle course thing. Mm. Like that's, that's a real like testing ground. Right. Again, sport and sport today too, it's like so structured and so protected and Mm -hmm. like little kids sports, it's all, it's great. And they, they do the, the different things, but there is hardly any room for failure in them. Yeah. So we wanted to create a somewhat safe environment. Yeah. Right. For kids to take risks and learn from those associated risks, hopefully get a little more confidence. Mm. And then our our class isn't just like running and jumping on obstacles. It's like right. a, like we mini CrossFit them first. Okay. So they do a warm up, and then they do a little workout, you know, yeah. kind of Tabata that like nobody would win, win at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we do want them to have some teamwork in there. <laughs> yeah. And then they play a game. Sometimes it's a little vicious and competitive, but sometimes <laughs> it's it's more fun. And then for like the last half of the class, they go outside, set up a different course every mm. week with the obstacles that we have. And so there is when they're like, I don't know if I can do that. You know, like when they get a little uncomfortable usually, right. it's that last half. So I think that is maybe a little bit of me saying, okay, I wish I would have done this kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> and when I was little, I'm sure I did, you know, until mm-hmm. like my early career that I was like, I yeah. don't want to mess this up. Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because nowadays I feel like so many kids, just like you said, in sports, like they don't really give them the ability to fail. They're like, oh, here's a trophy and here's a trophy. Mm-hmm. But like we were younger, it was a thing where we were doing so many things. You never thought you could fail until you hit a point in your life where you're like, well, that didn't work out. And so people just kind of quit. Yeah. But I, I like the thought is like, you know, don't be afraid of failure, because if you if you're not afraid of it and you push through and you take that loss, well, you take the loss and you learn something because every, right. every failure should teach you something. So I just think that's kind of cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was something too that I tried to learn something from my two-year-old as much as I can. And I think there is something to, to youth that gets lost once you become an adult. And like when he was trying to walk, he was like adamant that he was going to stand up and start walking that one day. And he fell down time after time after time. And as a parent and as the adult, you're like, oh, you almost got it. Keep going. Mm -hmm. But you never see that anymore. Like when you're when you're in high school or when you're like in college, you don't have that person. It's like, oh, you failed that business. Try it again. Yeah. It's just crazy. So I'm I'm glad you said that one. Fall down seven. Get up. Got that right. I love that. So we're at the end of it. (laughs) Unfortunately. This is actually kind of fun. So you want to drop in your social plugs? Sure. So Instagram, it's just, I think, Essential CrossFit. Just try to find us now. Right. And we're on, on the Facebooks. Got a little Google page, Google business page. That's yep. like very important these days. Oh, yeah. Google bots. Apparently. Yeah. Do you have a TikTok? <laughs> I'm old, so I don't. I should probably have somebody younger in the gym that up for us but i haven't delved into the tiktok world 
Don't worry. We don't really have one either. It's just a question. <laughs> we, we put things up there every once in a while and see if it works, but so far. Yes. But I just want to say thank you, Anne. Thank you. You were the first CrossFitter that came on. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. But it was great talking to you. I learned a lot. And now you got me thinking that maybe potentially I should look into CrossFit again. I didn't realize there were so many different program options. Like you said, I when I started working out years ago, it was the more traditional, right? very competitive, like, that's not me. Right. <laughs> um, that's, that's not us either. We want, to, we want people to go every day. I mean, you can't always win. You can't always right. you know, not fail. But we want people to feel like they accomplished something. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean beating you down every day. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Sure, right now. $14 for 14 days. Oh, when does that special end? Technically, the end of the month, but for your listeners. <laughs> <laughs> if you could. If Promo you... code wisdom. <laughs> I yeah. think that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. We'll hook them up. Love to get some more people in there and, and understanding that you can do hard things. Because I think even as an adult, especially as an adult, we yeah. forget that. Definitely. Well, thank you so much again for coming on and everyone that stuck with us this far through the podcast. Like, share, rate, review, all the things. And if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they deserve it. But I mean, oh, we're pretty good there right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. And we'll run it back at the gym. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Thank you. Cheers. Goodbye. <laughs>